Welcome to Beijing Info Plus. I'm Li Qing. Since March 3, 2020, the epic journey of a herd of wandering wild elephants in Yunnan province has generated worldwide interest in Asian elephants and biodiversity conservation in the province. Now, Yunnan, China's most biologically diverse province, is in the spotlight again. The 15th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, also known as COP15, began in Kunming, the capital city of Yunnan, on October 11th. It is the first UN conference themed on ecological civilization. Follow me as we explore this biannual global event. The Convention on Biological Diversity came into effect in 1993. So far, it has 196 signatories and China was one of the first countries to sign. The COP15 is to release a global diversity framework and action plan for the next decade. Are you looking forward to the following forum as much as I am? And what points of view will we hear? The launching of the white paper is, is an example of, of national action. Um, by China. The land, the river, the mountain, the water, na, more cleaner. Thanks to China's efforts to protect biodiversity, the conservation status of endangered species like the giant panda and the Tibetan antelope have successfully been downgraded from the endangered to vulnerable and near-threatened. How can China work with other parties to further protect biodiversity? I think especially within the ASEAN region, China needs to have a major role as a player in facilitating sustainable development and conservation. I hope that the China will uh, assist Cambodia on this uh, sector because nowadays Cambodia has a lot of problems with ecology and uh, climate change. What I learned from COP15 is that all life on Earth embraces a shared future. The loss of any species can destabilize its ecosystem. But here, I'm pleased to be able to share some good news with you. Chinese President Xi Jinping announced at the COP15 Leader Summit on October 12th that China will establish a Kunming Biodiversity Fund with an initial investment of 1.5 billion yuan to support biodiversity conservation in developing countries. Additionally, China has officially designated its first group of five national parks with a protected land area of 230,000 square kilometers. They're home to nearly 30% of the country's key terrestrial wildlife species. Let's work together to maintain a biodiverse world, featuring harmonious coexistence between man and nature. To get more information about COP15 and biodiversity protection, please check out the latest issue of Beijing Review to be released on October 21st. See you next time. Bye.